Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, I'm always in search of the top performers in every single field, getting the distinctions, getting the secret sauce, and sharing it with you guys. So today, I am happy to welcome Amanda McKinney. And she lives by the mantra, she helps accidental entrepreneurs define success for themselves whatever that means, we're going to talk about abundance, and then unapologetically chase that definition. And I love this idea of accidental entrepreneurs, which we'll talk about. So Amanda, welcome. Thank you so much, Chris, for having me here today. I'm honored to be on your podcast. Uh, um, we connected through Podmatch and tell the audience how you got started, your backstory and what you do. Sure. Well, again, thank you for having me. And I started my entrepreneurship journey in 2017. But before that, I was in the corporate world and was climbing that corporate ladder thinking that that was what I wanted to do. <laughs> and then ended up going, I moved to a few different corporations throughout my career in the corporate world. And once I was at one company, they went through a layoff period. And so my background is in marketing and marketing is often the first one cut in a layoff because it's really easy to outsource marketing. And so me and my whole team were laid off. And at that point, I thought at first it was a panic, right? At first it was like, oh my gosh, I have to find a new job. But then once I really slowed down and thought, well, maybe I could try this thing like doing it on my own, right? I didn't know anything about entrepreneurship. I really just stumbled into it, which is how I came up with the phrase of accidental entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. My story was being laid off, but other people kind of stumble in. That's exactly what I did. And now I've been in business for several years. And I, all along the way, it's just taking one step at a time and figuring out what that passion is and, and how we define success for ourselves. Hmm. Yeah, I love that. And uh, what's interesting is we're finding more and more accidental entrepreneurs just kind of stumbling in. It's uh, it's interesting. You know, it's, I always thought that people were very intentional and, you know, gung ho. So, you know, talking about, um, so one thing is we'll talk about abundance and defining success. How can someone define success for themselves? Um, cut through the noise, cut through the BS uh, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, all of that. Yeah. So one of the things I realized, this was um, a newer part of my story. So it was really in 2022, like the end of 2021, looking at 2022 is when I realized that I had never defined success for myself. So I use, and probably your, you yourself and your audience as well, sets goals. We're very driven people. So we set goals all the time. And I love goals. I will never stop setting goals and, and trying to achieve them. But what I realized was that that was my measurement of success. And when we do that, that always is moving the goalpost forward and we'll never achieve success. And what a devastating moment that was for me. And so that's when I realized, oh my gosh, success is different than the goal. And it really took quite a long time for me to figure out what success how I define success for myself. Fortunately, mm. I, it's a very easy process that I share now, but for me, it took about a year for me to figure it out. And now I've boiled it down into like something you can do in 20 minutes. And I have this free resource, like all of these things on my website, because I want everyone to do this for yourself. And one of the things that I really encourage everyone to do when you think about success is to ask yourself, what are a few things that I want? right now. Like if you were to set some goals, what do you want? What would you set them? And, and to outline a few of those things. And then if you and I were sitting and chatting, I would ask, why do you want those things? Because as I went on this journey for myself and trying to figure out how I define success and, and interviewing a ton of people, I wrote a book during this process as well. And so I interviewed a ton of people on the podcast and for the book and all of them had a, so that part of their sentence. So they would say, success to me is seven figures, six figures, whatever the numeric number is. Success is this. And then they would say, so that I can. And there was always something afterwards. And so I would encourage everyone listening to identify the numeric goal, if that's helpful for you. Identify what you want in, in your business, in your life, and then ask yourself, why do I want feeling? Am I going to try and get through achieving this numeric goal? 
goal. And that gets you so much closer to defining success on your own terms. Yeah, I love that. This is quite interesting idea is that um, how much role does the media like TV and movies play in how we perceive success and, um, you know, what we strive for, especially in Western culture? Sure. Gosh, I think it's a lot. And it really just depends on where you're putting your emphasis on the consumption. So for me, I can speak for my own experience when it comes to my entrepreneurial journey. My definition of success was being defined by the magical six figures, seven figures, like there. And it's a lot of me listening to other entrepreneurs, which I love that people share the story. I share my story. You share your story. All of this is great. But if we're only consuming the information and not actually taking ownership of what we are defining as success, then it definitely does it by default. So for me, I was chasing a number, very specifically a number, based on what other people call success. And so it happens by default. Now, that's my entrepreneurial journey. Um, if someone else is thinking about it from a life perspective, or maybe you're watching uh, different things, me media, social media, et cetera, and it's material things. I want this trip. I want this new car. I want whatever. All of those things are fine strive to achieve whatever you want to get. If you want the car, if you want the trip, whatever, it's fine. But I would also ask yourself, why do I want that? Because chances are there is a so that part of your sentence, so that I can explore the world, so that I can feel cool in my new car. Like There's no wrong or right answer. It's understanding the feeling and, and what's behind you, or behind the idea of what you want. That's going to get you closer. So I think a lot of things can we can consume and it will, by default, define success for us, but we can take control of it for sure. Mm, yeah. Really interesting. When you're transitioning into full-time entrepreneurship, basically you're the CEO of yourself and um, the really good ones, they move from this self-employment, they have they have their job to building a business. So um, you talk about the number one boundary that all entrepreneurs need. And I'm I'm always curious, you know, in boundaries and setting mm -hmm. things. So tell us. Sure. Well, I think the number one boundary we need is to understand what boundaries we need. <laughs> you know, it's interesting how this works out. So once you have defined success on your own terms and you say, okay, this is what def this is what success means to me and what I'm going to chase, which is great. And you understand that. Then you want to ask yourself, what boundaries do I need in place for myself to actually achieve that? A very tactical example of this is asking myself about time boundaries. That's usually the one that really needs to come into play because as soon as you're you start down the path of entrepreneurship, you realize I love what I'm doing, but it takes a lot of time because there's no one else here supporting me. It's generally yourself at the very beginning and then maybe a few contractors like depending on which route you take in your business. But most of the time, we're wearing a lot of hats and it takes a lot of time. And so you really probably need to think about time boundaries and understanding how much time do I want to be working? You know, and while we we won't have a perfect schedule because that's not possible, <laughs> like life is going to throw us curveballs. All of these things are going to throw us curveballs. But we need to think about what our ideal schedule is so that we can try really hard to meet that because chances are, if you have decided to be an entrepreneur, you have some element within you that you want to control your schedule. And you probably had the idea, I want to work when I want to work. But most entrepreneurs that I know start the business and they work more than what they were working. And so you really have to hold those time boundaries. And so it's all about asking yourself, if if this is my definition of success, what boundaries do I need in order to do that? Because everyone's boundaries are going to be different, but chances are time boundaries are going to be in there. Yeah, I love that. I love that um, This that question, if this is my definition of success, then what boundaries? So basically you're reverse engineering your definitions and tailoring it to what you want right. need. One thing that uh, 
you know, talking to a lot of entrepreneurs and successful people such as yourself is that um, not only time boundaries, but energy boundaries, you know, like, yes. really, you know, people, they don't not with, with, you know, people that take up your time, but, you know, people that drain you and, you know, leave you fearful or, you know, um, so you you talk about five buckets of people we need in our support system, you know, who mm -hmm. are these and why do we need them? Oh, this is one of my favorite topics to talk about because, you know, we as entrepreneurs need support. We need the support. And oftentimes when we're first starting our business, we are on our own. Unless you go down the route of getting uh, VC funding and can hire a team right away, typically speaking, you're starting with not much in terms of additional support in your business. And so from a personal standpoint, you need to have support in your life. Now, sometimes people feel very fortunate. There's a lot of people in their life that support them. And some other people don't feel that support right away. I've experienced both with clients I've worked with, and some people feel very supported and some don't. And so either way, there's a way to find the support. And it's actually easier than you think, which is really exciting. So when I was writing my book, I really sat down and thought about what are these buckets of people? Because all along the way, I've been asked, all throughout my entrepreneurship journey of how I have achieved the things I have. And it's all come down to the support of from other people. And so the five buckets that I've come up with, the first one is friends and family. Now, these are the people that as soon as I just said friends and family, you thought of their names. These aren't people you have to go and ask them to be your support. They just are. These are the people that celebrate with you, that lift you up when you need it, that you already know them. So count that as a blessing, whether it's one person or 50 people in your family. You know, we don't have to have a whole bunch of people, but if you have one or two in your friends and family circle, like definitely appreciate them and recognize how they support you. The second is mentors. This is one that we often get really hung up with and feel like it has to be a formal process, but it really doesn't. If you're listening right now, and, and I just said mentor, I want you to think about podcasts that you listen to, books that you've read. Those people are mentoring you and they don't even know your name yet. Maybe they do, but a lot of my mentors don't know my name. Brene Brown is someone who has mentored me and she has no idea who I am, but she has mentored me because she has supported me through her work. And so thinking about it in that way makes it easier to, to really comprehend that we do have support, even though those people don't know our names. The third is coaches. These are more formal relationships. So you find the coach that works for you. you it's either a paid coach or a not paid coach, just depends on your relationship with them, but a formalized relationship where it's, we meet on a regular basis and here's what we're talking about. So that's a different type of relationship and support that you need. And oftentimes we don't need that all the time in our business, but we need it throughout our business and we'll need different types of coaches throughout our business. The fourth mm -hmm. is therapist. I'm a big fan of therapy and I feel like every entrepreneur needs a therapist. And so finding that support is super helpful. This is especially the case when you have a lot going on personally and through business. Having a therapist is super, super helpful for that. And the fifth and final bucket is my favorite, which I call biz besties. And these are people who also run businesses. So it's other entrepreneurs. They're not just your friends. They are people that are also running businesses because those are the people who will truly understand the ups and downs of entrepreneurship because it is so hard. Entrepreneurship is not, there's like, uh, there's the highs, there, there's the lows. It's not for the faint of hearted. Um, there's some really tough times. Um, so I love this categories of five people and who you surround yourself with. One thing is uh, we talk, you talk about is, um, which is, uh, I love your, how you have these overarching ideas and very thought provoking. You say, stop setting unrealistic goals mm -hmm. and do this instead. Yes. So we we are kind of terrible at setting realistic goals. We're great at setting a goal. Uh, we, we often do this in our personal life where we set a New Year's resolution or say we want to get healthier and all of these things. But setting a realistic goal is very, very hard for us. And it's because we're human and our brains 
don't think about it that way. And once I share what I'm about to share, everyone's going to have the light bulb of like, oh my gosh, that's exactly why. (laughs) So one of the things that I highly encourage entrepreneurs to do is setting 90 day goals. So if you can set a yearly goal, if you'd like, but our brains just don't work like that. Like we can think about a year, but it's a really far off goal. And oftentimes we get further down the year and we freaking forgot what we said in January. Like, it's just like our brains are just not wired to do that. So 90 day goals are more realistic to set. So if you do this in a 90 day, it's three months, much more attainable. However, it's usually still not realistic. So what you have to think about is looking, the the steps are really this. If you want to set a 90 day goal, look back and look at what you have done in the past 90 days. Make a list of it specifically in your business and see what was realistic because that's what you already did. So we're going to look at the past to try and predict the future. So you can see, okay, I created my website. I started a podcast. I Whatever it was that you were able to do in 90 days, you've identified what you're able to do. So that gives you a context of what you can do in the next 90 days. Then the next step is to look ahead to the next 90 days and look at what days you actually have, because you actually are not going to be working 90 days. I hope not. (laughs) I hope you're not working all 90 days, right? So look ahead and see how many actual working days do I have? And then I want you to ask yourself how many hours you typically work. So I'm going to give a round number here, but uh, you know, if someone is working in a full-time job and and trying to start their side hustle to eventually go full-time. Sometimes people don't have very much time to work on their business, which is fine, but you have to be realistic about it. So if someone is like, I have five hours a week to work on my business and you say to yourself, okay, I've got five hours a week to work on my business and I have six weeks instead of 12 because I'm actually taking vacation. I'm doing all of these things. And so now you've got six weeks, or let's make it easy for math here. Let's say you have 10 weeks instead of 12, you're going to take a two week vacation, right? This is great. So in 90 days, you're going to take a two week vacation. You've got 10 weeks. You're working five hours a week, 60 hours, right? Did I do that math right? I hope I did. (laughs) But the point is you take the hours you can work a week times it by the, the number of weeks you have. When you can ask yourself, okay, what can I realistically do in 60 hours? That's a better question to ask because you can get closer to a realistic goal because our brains are thinking 90 days, but we're not actually working for the full 90 days. And so we'll set a goal that's too big. So it's really all about math. Hmm. Yeah, I love that. Um, I love this uh, idea of, um, I love these, uh, you know, 90 minute where you basically fully focus, you sprint. Mm-hmm. You just basically no distractions and it's it's amazing how much you can get accomplished and um really uh i love this conversation and um you're very knowledgeable how can people um contact you i know you have a book as well and um i know you have uh, a lot of stories to share and how can people follow you on social media thank you so much for giving me that opportunity and so everything um that you're probably looking for can be found on my website, which is Amanda McKinney. And I mentioned that I have a free resource on success. And that would be the thing that I would suggest if, if anyone's like, I want to learn more from you, I would say download that. And you can find that on my website anywhere pretty much, but you can also go to amandamckinney.com forward slash success. And it's a free PDF that walks you through that 20 minute process of defining success on your own terms. So that's a great resource. My podcast name is The Unapologetic apologetic entrepreneur. So I'd love for people to follow me there. And my book, which you're the first person I get to say this with on an (laughs) interview, but last weekend, this past weekend that, so you and I are recording on a specific day, but the the weekend before I hit Amazon bestseller with the ebook that is out right now, the print version will be out in June of 2023. So I'm very excited to share. And the book name is Why Not You, An Accidental Entrepreneur's Guide to Success. So you can find that wherever books are sold after June 2023. Uh, Yeah, I love that. And um, so for the audience out there, let's thank Amanda for coming onto the show. Um, 
And I always love this idea of goal setting and being intentional and defining success, living your life on your own terms, using what's going on in the world to help support you, filtering through the noise. Uh, all of Amanda's resources will be in the links and show notes. Be sure to check out her book on Amazon. I'll be doing that shortly and follow her on all her social media. And thanks so much for coming out to the podcast. Thank you so much, Chris. It was such a pleasure.